Hello guys, welcome, welcome to another episode of Ripster Daily Trade Recaps and Teachings. Fun day today guys, fun day, there's a lot to recap, there's actually a lot to recap, uh, especially the morning fade, the first half an hour, one hour fade and the short on the market and tech, so that I will cover in detail as well. Um, before I do, just a quick introduction to anybody new, so these are the trade recaps and trade teachings. Uh, from from my trades or any trades I take or any trades that I'm guiding my community um, Any trade ideas I share on Twitter on YouTube in my past videos or anything any um, uh, Trade ideas swing ideas or any investment ideas that I share on um, uh, On various platforms. I try to recap those we try to see what how we made money how we lost money what was a repeatable setup that we did and you know what are the learnings from each trade or each loser or winner that we can take home every day before the market opens few hours before the market opens me and my team we go through all the new sources upgrades downgrades macro news fundamental um you know geopolitical and we we come up with a game plan for the trades for that day up gappers and down gappers and we make a game plan what you see here is a game plan for today which was who denmark and vcr Myrna. Ababa, Baidu, Futu, Gemi, DRCT, NCNO, CCL, and bunch of um, other names, Reddit, Netflix, Apple. So th this was the game, game plan for today. We also, uh, we also create what we call as um, daily levels. So the daily levels are the levels that we create in the morning for all the market ETFs and the big seven plays that we play every day like Apple, Microsoft. Uh, Tesla all those names that we play every day So these are the levels which we provide to our community so that they can trade it with their own their, their own system In addition to that we also have something that's uh, our, my system of day two and day three setups Today's day two day three was UPS DGT a reddit week at EX among others and we will review them as well how they worked out so so with this with this plan we are you know I'm on the voice first few hours of the market open guiding my community through the um, what market is doing, what trades we can take, what's the direction, what's the strong name, what's the weak name, where's the short, where's the long. So I guide them, every, everybody through that plan in the mornings. And um, so that being said, introduction being done, let's start with our first play in the for the recap. The first play that I want to recap is Netflix. So for Netflix, um, I'm usually when we create a game plan, I'm up um, 15 minutes before the market open. I go through the game plan on voice and we make a plan what we will do. So the plan on Netflix, you see that Netflix was removed as the best idea from the list of Wed Bush, the analyst. Support was 628, resistance was 631. So I told everyone that we showed under 630, you know, we showed under that 630 and we long over it. So that was our plan. And I'm proud of the fact that most of the community really executed this plan themselves. So let's let's see how it panned out. So that was our plan on Netflix. And as soon as the market opens on Netflix, um, you see the breakdown of that six, you know, it tries to push that rejects that 630. And then it breaks the 628 resistance that we just talked about. And that what we will discuss how market was weak. So this was a easy short there, right? We have the news, we have the plan. You put your stops at 6.30, take a short right away, starter, half position, does not matter. You see the weakness, you hit that ask right away on the market orders, does not matter, right? I mean, because that's a fast amateur move. You do a starter, you see that it's still weak, and then you add into your positions. And Netflix continued to fade from that idea, 6.30, and, um, you know, I did mention at 9.40 as well, you know, short, as well from the pre-market plan the target i gave everybody was 615 um it was bouncing off that 615 and it kind of faked out right here that's where i thought you know maybe it's gonna curl so i told the community that you know we might curl here which was kind of a wrong judgment on me because it was still not curling because it was right here at the 512 emas and maybe i was looking at um, three minute chart and then it rejected that and faded all the way to 610 so you can see that and if you, you know the, the best part is the whole community was short Netflix you see so everybody was shorting Netflix 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 all day you know it's a beautiful trade on Netflix and that was by 
by dedication, by, you know, focusing on the pre-market plan. As you see, I was busy with other trades. Uh, you know, you know, I saw Netflix at 940. And even after that, it was decent, decent trade. But if you were ready with the pre-market plan, this was A plus setup, one risk, you know, to five reward, right? The options went 100% there on the puts. And it was a beautiful, beautiful setup. And one thing I really want you guys to note is the breakdown of one hour. Always look at the one hour chart. You see the breakdown of one hour 50 EMAs. So that always gives us a nice flush then when that happens, right? Even on the day, if on a daily chart, there was a nice trend line and there was a breakdown of this five, five, 12 EMA cloud that was on the daily chart. So 10 minute bearish, one hour bearish, daily breaking 512 EMA clouds, beautiful short with the pre-market plan. Well done, great one in the community. So next one we are gonna discuss is Reddit, right? The IPO. So let's see what was our plan on Reddit. Let's go back and let, check it out and let's see. So Reddit was a day five day, you know, it's, it's, I call all of them as a day two, day three setups, but they were the recent IPOs. I had a neutral bias. My support was 63.50. My resistance pivot was 66. As soon as I see that support break, you see that, right? It's breaking down this support and you can clearly see how this support, you know, one test, you know, I can put an arrows to show you like one, two, three, you know this area so you can see that so once that breaks i know it's going to flush you know it's a one hour support 10 minute support you can you can see that and um and once it flushes i tell everyone in the community it's on a short watch you know and um, and i do short right away i initially i start the puts but i realize the options have very high iv and they're not going to move if you want to understand more, watch my webinar. If you're in community, watch the options webinar. I will probably explain it in more in detail in some other video. But anyways, the options were pretty pretty high. IV, I knew they're not going to move. They, you know, they already have too much IV. Uh, if I held those options, they might be, you know, moving right now because Reddit is fading further. But the point was we were short, right? So then I hit, if I, then I also hit a short on the shares. So almost $61. Um, I was a little late, right? I, because I added the puts earlier and I realized puts not going to work. Then I hit short as well. Then I hit uh, shares short. And then my shares short at 61 went all the way to 56. You can see here, I was, um, you know, I was up 7% on my position, short position. You can, you know, and I, I was covering on the way. I did post my execution chart as well. Um, I can show you guys if you want to see that. Let's see if I can find that for you guys. My execution chart on um, Reddit short. Very profitable trade, right? Because we had a plan in the pre-market. We had our, um, you know, so here you go. So you can see that, right? I was short here, 61. Then I covered some here around um, 56, 680s. Then I covered more at 57. Then it pulled back. I covered more. Then I knew it's going to, you know, bounce. So I was out, you know, but you can see that I made almost right 61 to, you know, 56, um, you know, 57. So I made like $4 or 7% per share. And my puts finally kind of worked, but not really that much. So I closed my ports because they were um, you know, not moving. But it was a decent, decent trade. You can see um, we came with the planning. Uh, you need to have a good broker to short these IPOs. But you can pause it, watch, watch, and you can you understand why it was a short, repeatable setup. Why were we not shorting here? We don't short here or we don't short here. Even yesterday, I talked about this level, if you remember. We don't short here. Today, we short because the trend is breaking down. It's You can tell from this chart where it's short where it's long it's that easy right so tomorrow we'll watch again um it's already gapping down i wish it was a little higher if it pops to 58 tomorrow we'll short again this 56 level was in fibonacci uh, fibonacci level uh, always use fibonacci on ipos if it breaks that stays under that 56 level it's probably fair so this level is pretty important you know it's a fibonacci level so next one we're going to talk about is hood Hood was okay. I mean, before I talk about, it, I'm also gonna show you my my swing chart idea that I shared on Twitter in the hood before I talk about the short on hood. So um, let's see. 
let's see one second if I can show you that. So if you see this, you know, if you see this right um, on the hood, so you can see, right? So this was, this was today, right? So this was today where it hit 19. And then we, this idea was, let me go back and show you from the start what it was doing. So I shared this idea on um, February 26th as a swing um, breakout reversal. You can see how it's reversing. This is example of one of the swings, the bottom reversal I open talk about, the consolidation reversal. And look where it went from 15 bucks to 1650 breakout to 1650 breakout, still trying to break out and the finally break out and um, you know pushing higher and finally at 20s right so you see that this is what i cover in my swing uh, swing webinar so these are the repeatable setups we do and you know and i had 18 uh, 17 calls i had logged profit um, personally on the hood side but I'd, there are a lot of people who are still holding the hood and i got some nice dms on that uh, swing that i shared on twitter so that was a nice winner on swing side now let's see what what was the plan on the day trade side on the day trade hood was um, you know um, it was gapping up they launched a credit card support was 20 resistance was 21 I said bullish as long as 20 holds under 2020 we are gonna gap fill it and that's what it did it breaks it's a bearish right away you can actually short it right here starter right so I did a short starter right at open um, even and then I averaged into my puts when it started to break 20 and by the time it hit 960 I made nice almost 30 percent of my puts right they were 70 cents you know they went to um, uh, let's see where they went to you know they went to almost uh, 90 95 cents so there was there was decent move right i mean it's you uh, who doesn't have a lot of a uh, lot of range so that's enough move right for a 70 cents if you invested 700 dollars or if you invested let's say seven thousand dollars you made nine grand you made two grand that's that's good enough trade risk reward based upon this move you know so um, so that was good so it's such a tight range so that's good enough right risk reward on these plays good for a small accounts you know another repeatable setup we didn't get the full gap fill but you know it was still okay you know we got if i draw fibonacci we got almost you know from the highs we touched 0.61 it was a decent decent trade and after that it started to curl and we were out of it you know you can see when it started to curl i did a 512 curl alert and then after that al curl alert it pushed back to 1240s so you could trade back on the call side as well so now guys we are talking talk we're going to talk about the morning fades right so the, the the next few trades are all dependent on what i'm going to discuss here the morning sector fade tech fade spy qqq fade how we shorted you know i personally shorted two or three names but how we showed it and guided all the names right all the semiconductors names we will talk about that in the later next legs but let me just talk about what was happening in the market at the open and how you could have traded it rather than getting you know stopped out or you know getting faked out <clears throat> so so gap market was gapping up right so what i do you teach every time whenever there's a gap up there's a chance always of a gap down there's always a chance of gap down QQQ was weak right out of the gate. Right out of the gate, QQQ was showing me the weakness. So I knew that showing me the weakness, something's going to give up. So what were they? Right. So AMD, Nvidia, they were all all giving up. And the reason was when I looked at the sectors, you know, when I analyze sectors every day, that's what I do in the morning. And um, I could see that a lot of these semiconductors were being sold. IWM was was strong, which was our long idea. We will discuss that because IWM was being bought up, and which is a mid cap, and the tax were being sold one day left to the quarter end. So there was a money being rotated, right? The money rotation was happening, and you see that 512 breaks on SPY, right? That's a short there. 512 breaks on QQQ, that's a short there, and then QQQ breaks 3450. And then it breaks the bear flag around 10, 9.50 a.m. So that's the short. 
So that was the market overall market character that was happening. And that's why my focus was all on the short side, right? IWM was long. That's fine because it's the money was going from there to here to IWM, the Russell mid caps. That's a completely different sector. So money was rotating. But at the same time, the semiconductors were weak. SMH, you look at this chart of SMH, which is basically all the semiconductors and they, they gave up the clouds. So that's why I told everyone that QQQ is a short, right? We talked about uh, QQQ short scalps, right? Short scalps, spy puts. Even after 10 a.m., I told them QQQ spy puts. That was at 10 a.m. And, um, you know, we, we, I was on the voice, actually. I was guiding about on this short side. So that's, that's the reason we were focused on the short because market was heavy. Now, one by one, we'll go into through different plays that we nailed in the market and how that worked. Netflix short was also based upon this because market was bearish, market was short, right? The trend is short, our trend labels are telling us short, price action is short, It's there's a gap to be filled. So that's why we focus on the shorts. That's why we make money in the first one hour and we are done because this is a high probability trading. And that's how we nailed this QQQ short. Even if you didn't want to short the whole market, just short QQQ. Take a starter here, risk high of the day, add more under 3450, maybe add on a bear flag breakdown, cover into your 10, 10, 15, you know, so that's all you need. And um, so that was a nice, nice win for QQQ for us. Um, a lot of my guidance was on voice, so you won't see it here, but the point is to understand what is the market character at the open. And that's what I discuss every day on, on the voice. The first trade that the short that I personally did, I want to talk about is ARM. Right, so what was, we go through our levels again, it's all about the levels, the pre-market planning. You cannot do this without your pre-market planning. So my support was 127, resistance was 131, and I could see, I saw the sector weak, I saw ARM weak. And because ARM was selling off yesterday, that was my focus, because AM was under 20, 21 Ripster EMA ribbons. It was right here. So that's why ARM was my focus. You know, and I told everyone, let's short ARM. So, right, we short, we shorted ARM. That's fine. And here's what I want you guys to look at it, right? You have to have a better entry or you will always get stopped out on a swipe. So I was short and then it started to bounce. Right? It's still under the clouds. But just to cover my risk, I got out, you know, just for a moment. But then I saw the spy QQQ weakness. I hit it right back. So you see here, I said short as well under the pivots and I told everybody we need to break 128. So this 128 needs to break for a confirmed, confirmed bearish trend. And I didn't, I did not just leave it alone. I knew even if it's swiping up, that's fine. If I'm covering here, I, I know that it's still bearish, right? And it's my problem if I'm adding here, it's my problem that I'm, I, I am not able to hold it if it bounces, but that's fine. I manage my risk. I, I cut it, you know, break even almost scratch and just wait and watch. Then QQQ starts to fade. I re-add it, right? I re-add it. So you see, I, um, I told everyone if it holds 128, then we, um, we stop. We wait for 130 reject, 130 reject. But it rejected before that because just like I showed, told you, QQQ rejected. So when QQQ rejected, that's where I re-hit ARM. I hit it again. And after I hit it again, those my ARM puts started to hit, right? I'll, I'll show you what they did. So you can see there. And I was in the, and this one, I was just in the options. So when my ARM puts started to move, so I, I, I told everybody I hit them again. I hit them again, they go to 17%, then they go to 40%, I locking on the way, then they hit 70%, right? You know, eventually they gave me almost 100% because from that 128 break, we went all the way to 122. So that was a nice, nice short, you know, with the market gave us conviction and semiconductors I already showed you were short. So that's how you trade. You don't know, this swipe is your problem. It's not the system. The system if you are getting out here, you short here, get out and leave for the day. That's your problem. That's not a system's problem. The system is telling you it's a bearish as long as it's under the clouds, under the levels. And if you respected the system, you made money today. If you did not respect the system, that's your sizing problem. You know, even I cut, that's fine. But I was ready to add again. 
and I, and you see that and i said that i read it i did again right again on the flush so so you have to focus on the system rather than what other person is doing and he is doing and trust the system and size according to the system otherwise the swipes will get you out because you are chasing hair uh, such a big size that you are not able to withstand this two dollars swipe so that's a problem we need to withstand a two dollar swipe or we get out and get back in so anyways that was the how how i executed arm today i'm so very proud of that so let's let's now look at some other trades that we did in the community today avgo so again i go back to the same concept that i've been talking earlier so when we go back to avgo what were our levels right we go back to those levels right back to our levels so our levels were so avgo let's go back to our levels so level on avgo was 1329 was our support resistance was 1347 so back again right the whole semiconductor is selling you pick anything up pick anything up and you short it right you we know how the sector has been running and we know any sign of weakness we short it and i was talking on this voice as well because once this is this cloud is breaking it's no it's the the first step of weakness you can show it the initially there and then 1329 is breaking that's it it's gonna flush and i told everybody it's gonna flush to 1300 i told them way early not even at 950 i told them way early that it's gonna flush to 1300 and the flush was if even if you just take the 1328 level that was a decent decent trade europe for the option trades on that avgo and you know and a um, lot of traders did avgo short as well you know avgo 1310 port 1300 port meta arm puts so do you see that how that kind of worked out so that's how you nail high conviction short day guys so now let's let's discuss nvidia right the same thing as same thing as other trades and uh, you see you know um everybody was trading nvidia and nvidia i already said that 900 is gonna come right i said it i said in the morning 936 because i saw the weakness and again i go back to my levels that i drew in the pre-market nvidia 923 936 resistance and when that's gone the level is gone you just pick one you don't have to trade all this i didn't trade all this but still had a solid day and look at this nvidia 900 and it came nvidia puts went really really fun look at these people they all trade in nvidia you know orlando ab and melissa chris tom everyone they trade in nvidia such a nice you know their own execution not because i'm alerting because repeatable setup because their confidence in the system and their execution i i guess i guide on the voice i talk about what the market is doing but at the end of the day they are the who are pressing the buttons so defined risk defined trades and these are the days you make more and you know have a good day so let's now look at meta so meta meta was you know meta we was we had a plan in the pre-market that meta we will you know we will short the 500 psychological level so that was the plan and uh, i was a little late again you know because i have to guide um, you know hundreds of traders in, at the open so i i'm not able to execute my trades that fast but i try because i want to show the traders that what i am executing and how we are playing what is long what is short but anyways 500 psychological level that breaks and then we have lower levels on meta 178 oh sorry um, 495 497 all those levels give up the pre-market levels the 3450 ema cloud levels so all those levels just give up and when they give up and um do you just fade you fade them right the bear flag breakdown 490 was the target to cover half so you might hear some sounds you know as um uh, spring break some kids kids over um, so you might hear some kids sound sorry about that but anyway so that was the short the bear flag on meta breakdown and again all it links to the overall market scenario the market was heavy qqq was heavy rotation was happening so that's how you showed it you look at nira was short meta clay siddhartha you know um all these traders were short meta right again their conviction the system their setup uh, repeatable repeatable setups so they are pressing the buttons so anyways big win on meta as well there all right let's talk about a loser here on lulu 
So Lulu was, um, you know, pushing again. But the warning I gave today was when there's a bearish market, the longs are low probability. So it swiped that open. You know, we longed it, but the market was heavy. So you need to reduce the size and it faded right back. So that was the 512 pullback was a loser because of the market. And you, you need to, we understand that, right? We do understand that. And even after that, it did not hit and it was bearish. It tried to bounce again. You know, we thought it's long again, I told community, but it did not work. So at the end of the day, you know, I just avoided it because it's not ready. It's not ready for swing and it's, the charts are not ready yet. Yes, they are buying 385, 385, four days in the row. Maybe it gets ready soon. It's on our watch list. Real rever reversal will be over 400. Anyways, today it was a loser, but still on the watch. Uh, let's look at UPS. So UPS was going nicely at open. Again, it's all is in my pre-market day day one, day two levels, 143 support, resistance pivot 145.20, and it was bullish over the clouds. And you know, we were really doing good there at, at the open because I told everybody that UPS is turning bullish, right? We can long UPS. Let me see if I can show you. So I said we can long UPS. You know, long versus 144. So 144 was our risk. And but then it started to come down. And we just, you know, just wanted to tell everybody, keep small sizes in case the cloud breaks. But what it in essentially was doing was was creating a flag. So that gave me more confidence, right? So we were long 147 our first targets. Then I told people just be a little cautious, just be a little cautious, you know, reduce your size or you know, cut the position or do whatever, but the support was still the 144. And I was watching it. I was keeping an eye on it. When it showed me this flag, I mentioned on the voice that there's a flag. And that when the flag breaks and that's when you add more. So look what I said here. Black over 3450, now you can add more. You know, we still need market to push to help it. But irrespective of that, it pushed, UPS pushed, right? So this midday flag was another setup that we could trade. And then it from that 145s, it, you know, hit 147 end of the day. Now we are swinging it. Um, one hour is just trying to turn bullish. We'll see what happens. But our stops are right here at 144s because we are now decent in money, $2, right? Even if we take like one third off, we put $1 stop, we should be fine. Right. If tomorrow it holds 146, that is fine. But if it breaks 146, that's a problem. But um, but yes, that's the analysis. So let's look at MRK. So MRK was our, you know, I didn't do anything when it was bouncing, but when it started to break down, you know, there, let's go to our levels again. Right. MRK, the plan was. Uh, 130 130 and resistance was 132 so you see this support pivot i mentioned in the pre-market so i said gap fill is under 130 and long over it it never gave up never gave up the level i gave it never really gave up so it never you know it's not a coincidence just look at this level and see what i what i said in the pre-market that's the gap fill is under that level and how you know how crazy it is that the same level that I mentioned in the pre-market did not, did not give up. So, but we still, we started a starter, you know, short when it was breaking under the clouds. And, but when it started to curl, I said, get out. You know, I said, get out, just small loser on the short side. But, but look at that curl. Then I told everybody the curl. I said, no short. They held 130 all day over the clouds curl now. And from that 130 curl, it went all the way to 132. So that is the trade you take. If you are short, you don't look back, you get out. Because, because MRK never confirmed the gap fill. Look at the pre-market plan. It never confirmed the gap fill. So there was no reason really to keep holding on the short side small loss take it off get out and then you long it right so the morning amateur move this candle that moves in the pre-market i hate this candle that one that that moves right 10 minutes before i hate it it spoils the setup so it's you look at it it has been fading right away from that candle and there was no gap fill and there was a reversal trade a midday reversal trade right let's look at coin now so coin was um, you know coin was our um, so coin is on our watch every day and when it was breaking these clouds and the levels i told it's on the coin is on a short watch i told everybody as soon as i saw the cloud breaking down 
Bitcoin faded from 270s to the 253s. And, you know, um, so it was basically fade all day. You just had to show the bounces. It rejected and it, it tried to reclaim here. And I said it's making higher lows. Nice call on the floor by Navcaddy, who's talked about the rejection and faded again. So um, the main short was in the morning. Later in the, the midday setup was this bear flag breakdown. You could make some small money there. So anyways, it was a short all day. Uh, chump change winner, nothing, nothing big. But uh, we're watching, watching it for tomorrow, another red day. The coin likes to swipe back up. That's the only problem, you know. But one day it's going to fade all the way down without stopping, like a 10% day. Quickly look, going to look at another trade, Donut. So Donut Krispy Kreme was our day two setup. Um, if you look at the level, 1720 was a support pivot. And as soon as it, it's big move yesterday, that's fine. But remember, that's a huge move. And today it breaks the cloud, it's bearish. That's what I told everybody that it's a day two fades and donut was a day two. You know, um, great call by sponges right in the trading floor, day two short. Beautiful, beautiful call by sponges on the short. And you see that people are executing that short, sponges and Haristo. Everybody's executing the short in community based upon the repeatable setup. You don't need to trade 20 things. You pick one that works for you and look at this donut short from like you know it's it's down what it's down 11 percent today and all you need is five percent of that and you're good the next one i'm going to talk quickly about is um you know there was this um there was some midday curls ccl you see this curl right this was a midday curl 512 curls and then there was another curl midday curl drct 512 curls right so let's see you know what was the alert so there's this alert 512 curls so means it's curling and after that curl on ccl ccl went on from 1680 to 1760 so that's why i tell everybody in community to give attention to these curls right give attention to these curls you know look at this drct drct was actually the call on floor uh, on a 512 curl even if the 3450 curl worked as well but it was a call out by rgv he nailed it he nailed it very proud of rgv um you know he has improved so much so you see that the curl idea he gave and step by step you can see that how that curl worked out so just you know example of some midday 512 curl setups you know um and that's what we do in the community so many eyes teamwork that's how we nail everything all right i'm just going to talk about you know the strong sectors in the morning i tweeted about it i tweeted how strong are the solars in the morning all day solars are strong solars are strong and solar has been running all day because the money has been flowing from the other names um, to the 10 etf that covers solar was going good sedg uh, the main one in so in in that enph all i did was put eyes on everybody that this is the strong sector you know, we track sector every day after 10, 30 minutes, 20 minutes in the market open. I go look at the sector, which sector is strong. That tells me that we can have some trades there. So solar was a great example. And, um, you know, a lot of traders um, utilized that and they, you know, did ENPH trades. Some traders did SEDG trades, FSLR trades. So that was, you know, that was good, um, good in the community. Right. So just you need to know what sector is strong. So next one I'm going to quickly look is IWM. I'm not going to spend too much time as you know, we're getting a little late here. Um, IWM was a long, I tweeted in the morning as well that IWM relative strength early in the morning and all day IWM was strong. I talked about rotation. I already told you how semiconductors were selling. The rotation was happening. You know, the smaller names were moving. So IWM was long. Not only that, look at our pivot levels we gave on IWM, right? 207, 20680 was our pivot level. Once that level is broken, it holds the 3450 cloud. And then there's a, there's a flag that I shared in the morning. And that's what you trade, right? So yeah. All right, let's talk about how we traded end of the day. What happened? How did we trade that squeeze? what was behind that squeeze that we traded end of the day so let's look at that let's just go back and look at that squeeze play so initially market was dropping right so it was dropping here so that was the drop and you know we were ready for the drop like yesterday i was watching it i was watching nvidia i was actually trying to show nvidia if it broke low of the day and if qqq broke this level 
you know if it breaks it we were ready for the short but guess what it did not break it and right away i saw the buying up buying it back up and i i, I closed my nvidia puts you know just for like five percent four percent loss i was out and then i was watching this spy and i told everybody on the voice that they're gonna squeeze it right they're gonna squeeze the spy that's what i told them and um you know and they did you see as soon as spy goes over 512s and QQQ pushes over 3450, there's the squeeze comes and I buy tomorrow's calls on that squeeze and those calls go from 555%, 64%, 73%, 105%. I was out of all of those mostly. They went on to go on to almost 200%, right? They went just, just went crazy, crazy. So what was the point? Microsoft was pushing the SPY. You know, when this Microsoft and Apple's move, they push the market. So you need to know what's happening in the market. Apple is already strong. So that's pushing the market. So the, mar the so market is being pushed into the close. When it breaks this high of the day, It's you always know it's going to squeeze more. High of the day, end of the day setup, squeeze setup. Breaking out of this pivot, squeeze setup, right? So that was a squeeze setup. I actually posted it live on the Twitter as well. But these are the kind of opportunities you trade in the end. And and how do how did i know that we're going to squeeze because there was this pivot and remember we were trying to short it but the show there was no short we got out right away we didn't lose money staying short because when it turns bullish turns bullish and that's the open that's the price action you have to read i can read this price action right i don't know you can too as well it just takes a little time to understand the price action and we nailed the squeeze end of the day it was just amazing right some of these calls just went crazy so yeah guys so this is a this is a great day today great great fun day so much to learn anyways um i'll see you tomorrow uh easter promo is going on if you want to join the community come for guidance and a family of traders do not come for alerts thank you so much see you bye bye